and good evening. This is uh, George Pardos, your host for the Bear News, and welcome to tonight's broadcast. So, one of the things I'm going to do tonight, uh, because I think that the amount of uh, prebubescent screeching that is going on is at an absolute high, um, I'm going to bring on a... Um, A former law enforcement agent from Immigration Customs, and we're going to talk about kids in cages. So, for whatever reason, the the last week has been a an absolute I, I don't know what you want to call it, um, just a, a shit show of just the amount of false information that has been going on um, is just incredible. So one of the things that, that's going to happen is that we're going to uh, we're going to talk about the the amount of I don't, I don't know what you want to call it well it, whether it is a um, whether it's a lie, whether it's propaganda and everything else. And I understand that a little bit of it is due to the fact that people are lying. But the soup du jour has been that these kids are coming across the border and we are taking them from their parents, putting them in the cages, and you know, then basically treat them like, I, I, I don't know, whatever, like Cujo. Which is the farthest thing from the truth, and it it, it really isn't uh, it, it isn't really happening. So it, it's not happening in the the, the manner what they're, they're you know the people are saying it is. Now, part of the reason this is happening is, you know, the amount of vitriol hatred towards Trump is just an, an absolute high, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that. You know, Trump is just making you feel a certain way. But again, yeah, it, it just isn't the truth. And so, um, you know, one of the things that, that is that has happened is, you know, if you're going to sit there and, and talk about people and lie, um, you know, then it is just an, an, an absolute... Um, you know, just an absolute. Oh, I, I don't know what the you know what the right term is, but it, it it's just an absolute um, disservice to the argument when you're sitting there telling people that it, it you know that you're grabbing kids, separating the parents, and just uh, putting the kids in cages and treating them like animals. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring on. Um, my my friend Shuff, and we're going to sit there, and I'm going to let him start about why the, this debate of, of the kids in cages is such a lie, and what actually happens when you actually go to cross the border. So, welcome to the the the, the Bear News, um, Shuffy. Um, introduce yourself, and I just want to get right into the meat of it. Yeah, no, that's not a problem. Yeah, like you said, I work northern border, not southern, but policies, port policies are all different out of a report. And you also have national policy, okay? Right. National policy is supposed to be the same, but you will have some variance, and usually it, it comes in a more lenient way, okay? Now, the pictures that you saw, and we all saw, that was from Obama's era. And what they were doing is at the initial capture point, okay? Uh, we're talking about somebody just coming across the border, right? That's where you're gonna see a kid in a cage because you can't put them in with adults. Right. First off, they gotta find out if those kids have been smuggled, if they've been human trafficked for the people to be able to come through. Uh, they have to determine lineage, and sometimes this is gonna be a while, but they have to keep them segregated, even if it's their parents, until it's confirmed it's their parent. You know, it, it'd be a lot different if the baby popped out of the mother right there in the uh, office. You could say, that's the baby. And then you would, you would actually, they do this with children that are babies, 
they put the mother and the baby in a separate area too to protect the mother and the baby. Okay. Well, let, before we do this, I, I want to cover something that me and you have talked about in the last couple episodes. Um, there's a lot of coyotes that are using right. the kit. Now, I, I want to bring something up. This is going to be an unpopular view. Um, from 2005 to 2016, um, they had a program called Catch and Release, right. where if you were bringing a kid across the border that you said was yours, they were using them for, um, they were using them as far as, you know, people were lying about that the kids are mine and they were using them as cover and the coyotes right. were basically lying about it saying this is this is my kid when they actually weren't their kid so one of the Look, things that, that, that there's no biometrics at the border you could say there, this is there, my there, there's biometrics at the border it's whether the people are put into it but right here's here's a prime example and you're saying coyotes it's also smugglers this is a fact you know i've seen back in that time uh we had a communication system called text treasury enforcement communication system and you would see pictures and what's happening for the intel on different parts of the border and uh, i'm this is going to be graphic the explanation of this but a woman came through baby all wrapped up and everything and they had the baby was dead and they had stuffed the baby and sewed the eyes shut everything and the mother's carrying it it is a kid and uh it was full of cocaine right so i mean and then you also have to worry about internal carriers that means somebody swallowing what we call balloons but they're actually usually glove thumbs that they just la lope and lope over top each other and then sometimes they'll burst in people's stomachs i mean th this is real deal stuff so you have to worry about that also even with the kids that you know some smuggler decides he's going to use kids to traffic it right uh, so i mean there's a lot of nuance to it but see the main concern with immigration customs and cbp is that those kids remain untouched that those kids and they will eventually be reunited with their parents here's the problem that they're trying to conflate two different things First off, if a father has a deportation order, let's say the mother doesn't. So the father gets uh, thrown out of the country, and the mother and that child, depending, logically, should go with the father, right? But right, if the technically, child it... was born, if the child was born in the U.S., it becomes an anchor baby. Right. Now, that has to be adjudicated in court. So if the mother decides to leave, everybody's heard of these FEMA camps and stuff. What they actually are are holding areas for families. That's why they had swing sets and stuff, and the conspiracy tards were saying, oh, they're going to put families in these things. No, they were putting families, as many as they could, in there that were going to be deported. And this happened under Obama, too. And it, it's happened, and it's a problem is with the Congress. They have left these laws unaltered. Honestly, since like 86 under Reagan was the major overhaul. Right. Since then, nothing's been done. They keep passing the buck. Right. Well, and, and, and I want to bring something up, too, is that one of the things that, that, ha that is, seems to be happening, and one of the things that I, that I always I, I, I talk about is this. W what the the press is telling you is making you want to feel a certain way about a subject. And it's not always necessarily true. Because one of the things that me and you have talked about is this, is the integrity of the message. Now, one of the things that exactly. I want... Exactly. One of the things I want to bring out, uh, in, in all your years as an a, a, you know, Immigration and Customs Enforcement agent, have you ever had to shoot anybody for coming across the border? No, not doing that. I mean, you know, uh, okay. Well, you know, I've had to do it in different functions of my career, but never uh, with that agency. That agency 
you'd have to draw down on, let's say, you got an armed and dangerous or something. There's stuff that you do pull a gun on, but in all honesty, on in that with that agency, no. And 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 their policies are written to where you know you're. If you have to use deadly force, um, you can get hemmed up and jimmed up real quickly. If if you even make a slight mistake, right? So and then it's, it's well, no, because me. I mean, one of the things that that people are saying is that the the, the people on the border that the ICE agents. And this this is what ICE it, doesn't work the border. That's border patrol. ICE works interior. Border patrol works along the border. Okay. ICE is interior, like Ohio, New York, somewhere that's further New York City. You know, somewhere like that where it's not right on the border. They do now if it's a if it's a criminal coming in, Immigration and Customs Enforcement will come in. CBPOs. Customs and Border Protection officers work at the border checkpoints. So right. it, it amalgamated three separate agencies into one when they when they took them from Border Patrol and Immigration was out of Department of Justice and Customs was out of, was out of Department of Treasury. So they amalgamated them into along with uh, Coast Guard and several uh, Secret Service, several other agencies into Homeland. So, right, I mean, but I, I know you didn't just call Coast Guard the, the lifeguards with guns. I know you didn't just bring them up, did you, really? Oh, yeah, because they interdict anything in the seas or coming in through the air. I mean, that's they have an important job. And, and also, I got newfound respect during the Gulf War. We took, uh, for the siege of Falaka Island, uh, they put us in their, um, what were they called? Um, not John... Um, Oh, shoot. I can't think of what they're called, but they're basically big-ass <laughs> uh, uh, boats. Right. But they're, uh, but they're uh, fast boats, right? And they put Marines in them, and I still have a chipped tooth because my AR or M16 uh, front sight post chipped my tooth because we once we passed the jetty, we were bouncing up and down, literally getting vertical, hitting the next wave, getting vertical, hitting the next wave. So, I mean, you know, th this is reality. So th they do have a purpose and a place, but yeah, for for what they do here, it is to protect our seaways and our airspace, and that's that's their job. Right, but here here's the okay. Let let's let's go Barney style on this one, because this is a this is important, and and so you have a a mother uh, or a father coming across the border with a child break it down barney style for the people that are listening because this is what's important take me through what would be policy for immigration and customs to act on as you're walking across the border let's let's just put it down easy they're coming let's say they're not even illegal coming across where border patrols first grabbing them okay okay let's say they're actually coming through a port you know one of the like like uh you know, a border crossing, Brownsville, whatever, right? And right. they present themselves to CBP, or let's say they're even rolled up in a carpet. Who knows how they're coming across, but they're coming across some way. They get interdicted by CBP. First thing they'll be done is they'll be put in secondary. Now, if there's children, they're going to put them in a separate confinement area with children of a similar age, okay? Then they're going to interview the parents, they're going to run all the uh, little biometric data and see if they've come across before, if they've ever whatever, right? And uh, see if there's family links and they identify the kids. Then you're going to have another person interviewing the kids. And it may take a while because you're going to repeatedly ask, is this your mommy? Is this your daddy? Is this your uncle, your aunt? Whatever, right? Uh, do you have your mom's number? If it's an aunt or an uncle, usually they'll have paperwork from the parent or whatever to cross legally. I mean, there's a lot to it. And it's going to be checked, and it's going to go to secondary for it. Just a normal crossing. Uh, even my sister was going on an international flight with her three kids. Now, you know, they're half because my sister married a, a he's an Ohioan, but his family is of Spanish descent. So the kids have dark hair, and she has blonde hair blue eyes. So they even 
at an airport separated them. It's the same kind of deal, folks. And anyway, so if, if there's going to be a deportation status, that's an easy one. You send mom and kids and dad home if it's deportation at a border, okay? That's easy. The problem is with Immigration and Customs, it's internal. So now you may have an anchor baby. And this is, see, all this stuff has never been cleaned up. Reagan didn't even get it cleaned up. And why do you think also, that is? Okay, why do you think and, that is? Is that, that we don't have a good policy? Or you well, don't. National policy is honest, and, and it's great. That is what Trump said we're going to use. He's basically trumping pretty much all of port policy. Like I said, port policy is where you get it watered down where all of a sudden the policy is still going to be maintained for the integrity and safety of the kids. But if you have some liberals in charge of that port, all of a, and trust me, kids want a juice, they want water, they want food, they're getting it. All they got to say is, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. They're getting it, and even if they're not saying it. And they get checked every 15 minutes. So, you know, I mean, a physical eyeball on them, okay? Uh so the, it's a fallacy that they're just putting – that that was a temporary thing, and that happened under Obama. So all these people talking about cages, I'm sure stuff has been changed, and there's probably places that are still like that temporarily. But you got to remember, under Obama, you had waves of kids coming up here unaccompanied. Right. So, so you had and, – and he was busing them into the internal parts of the U.S., where they went to families that were going to try to – basically hide them and so i mean there's a lot of chicanery but it's because port policy is being enforced or port policy is now being trumped by national policy which is the way it should be there's still pockets of resistance just like your sanctuary cities you're still going to have that in certain ports and uh it's just ridiculous and that's all i'm saying man i mean but CBP, here, here's the here's the the argument. CBP and, is the umbrella for immigration and customs enforcement, for border patrol, and for CBPOs. It's not immigration and customs enforcement. You do have INS, but that's when you're going through court, and they're the people that are your legal beagles, your paper pushers, your admin people. So I just got to get that clear. So everybody, you know, I see you just threw a U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. The more correct one would be CBP because that covers everybody. That's CBP, okay, explain to our, our listeners what CBP is. Customs and Border Protection. Very simple. And that's the umbrella organization. You have CBPOs, Immigration and Customs Enforcement off Agents, and you have uh, um, uh, Border Patrol Agents. And right, they all but, fall under, okay. but, but what, I'm, what I'm asking you is this. Is the the narrative that people are coming out with, where you know, because is the narrative where people are coming out with with the fact that we're treating people as, um, let's say, um, you know, let's say we're we're throwing them in cages like I I, I don't know what like animals. That's what they're trying to. Yeah, you, that's exact. Yeah, that's exactly what they're saying. They're saying that they're being treated like caged animals. And they're not getting human dignity and rights. Look, would you rather have them put in, let's say it's a little boy. What if you got pedophiles, which is common in the second and third world. That's not, you. everybody keeps putting our first world ideas on these countries that are second and third world. Right. You know, wake up and realize everybody don't have your values. Quit projecting. Secondly, you put a young boy with a, a bunch of men, something bad might happen. Well, that's going to be that's going to fall on that port. That's that guy's going to maybe get prosecuted, but good lord, if that kid gets killed, whoever's on duty on that time, well, they're going to figure out who to charge. Let let's bring up two issues that our listeners haven't been made aware of. In Brownsville, Texas, and Reynosa, Mich and Reynosa, Mexico, they have found in the last three years, they have found two mass graves where kids have been taken out of, out of I, I don't know what, what, 
correct me whatever word you want to use and you want to be uh, succinct about it. Um, they have had two mass graves being used because they've buried kids in the middle of the desert and the kids were killed because they couldn't smuggle them across. And there have been two mass graves that have been uncovered by by the federalities on, on Reynosa's side. And in Brownsville, they have said, listen, we've had human smugglers, uh, the, you know, whatever you want to call them, whether you want to call them coyotes, human traffickers. Human the trafficking is the official title. Yeah. The same group has been tied to the group of in St. Louis, which it has 100, almost 130, 140 missing black girls and and right. children of color. They've been tied into the same trafficking, which is the same group that was tied in to the, the Toledo, Ohio group that was tied yeah. into human trafficking is the same group that's on the border. So I understand there it, the optics behind it do not look correct. There's no doubt about it. But the idea that all of a sudden we're taking kids and we're removing them from their parents and we're um, um, we're removing. I, I don't know what you want to call them. We, we remove them, separating from their parents, and you know, but just it might not be their parents either. I mean, right? You got to remember, they're fu they found near Brownsville. Since you brought it up, uh, Craig, um, the Sawman Sawyer, famous Navy SEAL, you and guys a Marine. Probably have heard of him, and, and a Marine. Marine. Yes, yes. Uh, his group found. And I'm not joking about this. If you guys think I am, then you're sadly mistaken. You guys can look it up. But his group, it's, it, uh, it's um, I think it's Operation Rescue. I'll have to look it up. I don't want to speak out of turn because I may be forgetting the exact name. Uh, there's one called Operation Underground Railroad. And then there's another one called, uh, I believe it's Operation Rescue. Anyways, right. Um, the, the thing is, they found rape trees where they had lashings for uh, just at the level of a child, tables with lashings. Uh, it's an old cement country, company that's known to have uh, ties to the, to the mafia, MS-13, and that was on and our the side of the and, 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 and don't forget the Zetas because here's yeah. one of the things right. that, 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 that is happening across the border. Look... Let, let's be honest about something. You know, let's be honest about one thing. There's no one. Me and you are 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 six C. No one wants to hang children in commons and say, "Listen, we we just want to throw the kids to um, we just want to throw the kids out there and punish them." No one wants that. Let, can we be honest about that and right. say? Right, but but you also have people coming across the border, or getting caught here, and they say they're 16, and it takes a DNA test right to prove they're 18, 20, 21, and like I said, people forget this whole soft spot is something that we in the West have, and you know why we have it because we have that altruism thing, and it's suicidal altruism. And, well, uh, let, let's be honest about this. I mean, look, none of us want. Here, here's the thing: it's not is it, it is none of us want to say that we want to kick toddlers in the face. I mean, I, I mean, let's be honest about that. Right. I there, get that. there, there's none of us here. Whether it's it, it is from whatever side of the fence you're on, whether you're you're you know a Democrat or a Republican, Libertarian. No one wants to say, "Hey, look, let's go kick a toddler in the face for for some tacos." No one is saying that. But what we're saying is, listen, those of us that have been on the front lines, me and you have been deployed in some shitty parts of the world, and we understand. Listen, not right. everybody that's going to come across and seek asylum, seek refugee status, seek whatever you want to call it, um, is going to be telling the truth, and. The, the one thing that we want to say is that at the end of the day, what you're listening to on the narrative isn't exactly what is policy. 
well, you're exactly right. The narrative, look, when those pictures first came out, every news agency was like, look at what Trump's doing. Look at what, no, it happened in 2015 or 14 under Obama. I think it was 14. It well, it's be been going, it's not just under Obama. Let, let's not just hang no, on. No, I'm, 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 I'm not saying that, George. I'm saying those specific pictures, those pictures. Right, of the cages. From his era in the cages, okay? I'm being very specific, and that was when the kids were being thrown across the border on the on the death train. There was, right. So many kids were getting killed that way. So, I mean, it's all muff fake, and everybody buying into this narrative, I feel bad for, because they're being led around. There's a reason why nobody trusts the media. They, they, well, let's also bring trust, up a, let's bring up a point. The bare news right now than you would... ABC, NBC, CBS, or CNN, or MSNBC. Right. Let's because bring up the, the, the. Let's bring up. I, I want to. And, and me and you, like like I said, we've been we're Title Six C. Um, we've been federal. You know, we've been law. Uh, you know, military police deployed in some really shitty parts of the world. Right. We fall under what is called the Good Samaritan Law. Okay. And, and I, I want to bring that up for a second. If we there, there's a thing called a duty of care. If me and you are under arms, or however you want to bring, however you want to say that term, we have a duty to provide care to people we run in contact with. Um, just like we had to provide care in Somalia for the kids that we ran into right. contact with, we had to provide. I had to provide care for um, the kids that were in Somo uh, in Kosovo. And we have. If you're at the border and you have a kid that is dying of, of, let's say, of, of thirst, you have to give them whether right. what, hospitalization, no matter what it takes. You're no right. matter what it takes. But, and but go ahead. Thing that's once you have them in custody. Okay. Here's the thing, and and this is why I tell folks the laws and the Congress and everything. Have, and we're talking Supreme Court, too, because it was held for, fed, for federal law enforcement, for civil law enforcement. They don't have a duty to respond. The reason why it was held was it was taken to court, and it went all the way to the Supreme Court. I can't remember the name of the, uh, the uh, case right now. But it's case law now, and it's a fact. And it was taken because somebody got killed after calling the police and expected them to assist them. Right. The problem is the police didn't get there for two hours. And by that time, the murder was done. Everything's done. And all police and law enforcement is basically boil it down to this. They are the people that write the report after the incident. Right. And, and that's a fact. So, I mean, let's not... We had... The military, and, and you'll have it under port policies and national policy, that they, there is a expectation of duty to, of care for those that you are now in charge of, that you have in custody. And that, that goes everywhere. I mean, if you don't do that, you're going to prison. Right. It's, but, it's the Castle Rock. Uh, it is the Castle Rock doctrine, which says that it's Castle Rock versus Gonzalez. Um they they don't always have a duty to protect you. Um, exactly, unless you are physically in custody. Right. That even as a military policeman, uh, if something happened, normally you're going to show up after the fact. Right. And you know this as well as I do. But if you let's say people are jumping the fence and you have some kids, well, it's more the the, the actual case is. Let, let's look about Warren versus District of Columbia says right. um, that held that the police denial specific duty to provide police services to the citizens based on public duty doctrine. Unless that per, unless you have a, what's called a duty of care, which is that you have them in in your custody. Right. Under arms. And, and that's the that, that's the second right. part of it. It, it, it's not that you have them in custody; it's you have them in custody under acting under color of law, and that That's is the right. and that's that right. is the the big, um, however you want to say it, 
it, it is the um, I, I don't know how to how to express it, but you have to be acting under color of law, and you have to be responsible for them. It well, isn't. If, go if ahead. You're a cop in Ohio. Ohio has cops are on twenty four seven. Right. The the color and, of law. And if and if you yeah, they are under color of law twenty four seven. So if they physically see you doing a crime, they can react, but they can also not react. It's their decision. They can be around to take the notes, okay? They can file the report. They have not taken Joe Bag of Donuts into custody. Once they've taken him into custody, now comes their duty of care, okay? And that is under color of law because you just put the habeas gravis on Joey Bag of Donuts. You now have him in your custody, so anything that happens to him, let's say he runs away once you've cuffed him and he runs in front of a bus, you didn't have proper care of him. And you can be held on that. So, I mean, right. it, it, it's very, it's a very, and, and so the cop may decide I'm just going to be a good note taker. I'm going to let, I'm going to call the police. I'm here and if he points a gun somewhere, I'll, I'll deal with it that way. But for me to get involved right now, may cause more endangerment you know it's it's all about having discerning judgment and not you know a lot of people won't want to hear this but you, your duty to respond may be wiser if you just write down notes and say this is what happened and you're watching him let's say he runs away you can run you can keep updating people on your phone right see what i'm saying i mean it, it, everybody you once you put the habeas gravis on that person, no matter what the fuck happens, it's your responsibility. Because right, and, and and here's one of the other things that that I want to I want to point out to is the minute that you put the you restrain someone as a law enforcement agent of the federal government. This has nothing to do with local police enforcement. Pl it, it does it, actually, but okay. well, well, not as much with. That, that you're not going to have as many of the, the local sheriffs, the local police officers acting as border agents or customers. You, you do it down in the southwest and in right, some but it, places like Detroit, you're going to have people who run across immigration. And there's little courses they can take down at Fletzy and other places to learn some of the basics. But like I said, man, it's it, it's gotten so... Congress needs to clean it up. Period. Right. And so do so does the Supreme Court. They both need to clean it up because the laws are open to interpretation, not clear. It's the same as with gun laws. All these laws, they keep them vague for a reason. They keep them vague so that they can do more than what they're supposed to do and they're vague because that way they can fuck you or fuck the officer easier it's right and, and, and let and, and let's cover some of that because you're having a field agent or you're having somebody that is deployed in a in an afford area like for example if you take a look at some of the at, at some of the um uh, let, let's say some of the the places that we have law enforcement on the border there are some places that are just um however you want to say it they're not easy to guard they're they're really just not easy to guard at all whatsoever um if you go to you know like laredo uh del rio texas some of these places you know there are places along the border on the rio grande where people are actually water skiing and you know they are um they're water skiing across the border these aren't your you know typical mexican whatever you want to call it people that are crossing the border illegally when, what you here's the thing anytime you're crossing a border whether it's water air or land okay you are subject to inspection. Let's say you just let's say you're you're going 
water skiing in your example from a boat coming from the U.S. and you go past that center line, that center line that separates the two nations, you are able to be inspected. You're able to be find out what declarations you have, i.e., in case you, you know, brought some dope back with you, and that is settled law. Okay, and find out your nationality. That's the reality of it. Or if you bought something over there, and let's say it's over a certain amount of money, and you have to pay some duty or whatever. Right. That's what I'm saying. So that water skiing thing, we used to have boaters come across that were Americans, that would, and they didn't even know it. This is in the river in Detroit. I'm getting feedback, bro. Are you? Uh, yep. Anyways... It's gone now. Um, so you go across, but you, you didn't go all the way over to Canada, but you went past that line. They would be bitching at the Border Patrol when they brought their ship back, and they'd be like, well, we didn't go over there. Well, yeah, you crossed that line. Right. And, and, and that's the problem. You know, so, you know, just because you don't know the law and you don't know the, where you're at, there's people that have gotten lost going across the board. Look at that one guy. He was a, I think he was a Marine sergeant. Right, right. Who went accidentally across the border into Mexico with a shotgun or, or a rifle or something. Echo again. And uh, they detained him in Mexico for bringing a gun in. Yeah, Andrew, so, I mean, a, a, Sergeant Andrew Tamarosi yeah. was finally freed from the Mexican jail. But and and here's here's the 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 thing that I I, I want to point to. You have places across the border where people are coming across. They are doing it with bad intentions. And, and, and let, let's say this: um, under the the Obama catch and release plan, a lot of the coyotes were using kids as cover. Right. And and I'm not saying, look, let's be honest about this. We, regardless of who was in, at the White House at the time, the Coyotes have been making money on bringing kids illegally across the border for the last 30 years. This isn't new. So let's not, you know. Uh, uh, we can discuss that another time offline, but it, it did increase. Right, it did the last eight years, and it I'm did increase under the under the catch and release policy, which started in in the last eight years. Let, let let's be honest about that, because you know, right. let let's say this part of the other thing wa that was happening in the last eight years, which no one in the press wants to argue about, was that the 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 gun running. Um, fast and Furious, also Done by the ATF and the FBI. We all right. know how great those agencies are. Those policies also made it hard, harder across the border to enforce certain laws that should have been enforced, but they didn't do that because part of it is they, the ATF and the FBI, thought that they were more capable than they really were. And it showed the it, it showed the let's say the deficiencies in that system because Look, it, it didn't that did not get exposed until Brian Terry got blown away and a former and marine then, and, a, and, a, and a marine he's veteran a former marine I understand that but he was a border patrol agent at the time gets blown away former marine you are correct but Cheryl Atkinson of CBS News. It's, it's now been found. This is common knowledge, folks. You can look it up. At the time, it was conspiracy theory. Me and George like to say a conspiracy theory is one thing, but once you've proven it to be a fact, it becomes a fucking conspiracy. Right. And here's the thing that happened. Cheryl Atkinson had her house, her phone, and her computer not only wiped and information taken off of it and her house broken into, it came out that the FBI and, look, ATF was in Treasury. That's where they belong. They're revenueers. They get revenue from alcohol, tobacco, firearms. That's where they needed to stay. They pushed because they do have experts in the EOD. I give all cred to ATF EOD. They're awesome dudes. 
But the other people are nothing more than revenuers. And when that gunwalker thing happened, it's only because of several ATF agents who had a guilty con conscience that talked to Cheryl Atkinson, told her about it, and Obama, see, here's how he kept everything in line during his time. He was going after whistleblowers. There used to be a protection. And trust right. me, I've whistleblown a lot. And you know this, George. I've, I tell right. the truth on crap. And the thing that I'm saying is he went after all those whistleblowers from the ATF. And you have dirty water, which the ATF has always had because of their different stuff they do. And you put it in clean water, which was DOJ, Department of Justice now. That's where they're at. And look, DOJ has a black eye. So does FBI. And they've all been implicit and complicit right. with these operations. Well, and it and it just goes to show you. Here, here's the thing that that if you walk this back and and you say, "Hey, listen, we we have a tendency to think that everything is done um, a, as a representation of people's better angels," and that's not always the case. And I I think that's one of the things that that we need to to address here is that some of the things that are being done. Some of the things, and I'm not saying this in, you know, to pick on one group in particular, but as a whole, right? you've got to say, hey, look, not, um, um, you know, not everything that you see um, is, not everything you see is as clean and clear cut as people make it out to be. Especially the mainstream media. That's exactly right. Look, I, you and I both know how many times something's been presented and we were a part of it or whatever. And all of a sudden, by the time you see it, you're like, what the fuck are they even talking about? The government, look, agents can lie to you. Police can lie to you all day long. I tell people this all the time. You cannot lie to them. Do not lie to a cop. That right. just gets you in federal. That's 1,001. And that gives them an entry point. So you don't lie to them. You just tell them the facts. This is what happened. This is what happened. And, you know, whatever. It's going to be what it's going to be. But don't give them that entry point. You know? And, and, and honestly, don't talk to the police. Get a lawyer. But if you feel like you want to talk to them, you only tell them what they ask, and you are honest about it. Right. You know? Well, and and here's one of the things that I, I want to I, I want to point out. Under one of the things that that was happening um, in in you know, for example, in the CBP Nogales Placement Center, where you know Obama had them sleeping on mats and you know with uh, the 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 space blankets. Right. It, it wasn't like at that time they were being treated inhumanely what was happening is they were um that you know they were watching tv they they were being right you know it wasn't like they, they were play time they could go outside and do i get it i know and and i'm not saying that under obama that was even wrong but what they what they felt to realize what are you going to do first off you have third and second world people coming across the border during this time uh lice can be a problem uh, the little thing where, uh, what's that stuff called, where you get a cut and it gets infected with that weird stuff and they got to cut your oh, arm Oh, staph off. infection. Yeah, staph infections. All these kind of freaky diseases can exist. So you got those mats that are like the ones we used in gym that you can spray disinfectant on when there's no kids there. You give them a space blanket because if you gave them a wool blanket, that may carry that. Right. And you just throw the space blanket away and give them another one. So what's the wiser choice? What You know, kids like to, here, I, I just ate a banana. Have some part of my banana. They're also, I'm cold. Well, I've got, a, I've, got a, I've got a space blanket, Joey. Get under it with me. You see what I'm saying? So there's a rationality to it. I'm not hating. Look, there's a lot I can disagree with with Obama, but that's a temporary situation to suss out who is your parent? Are you with that parent? Let's rejoin you with that parent, no matter where they're at. 
and that's a temporary holding. It's it's so much more humane than giving them to somebody who says they're his dad, and he's actually a trafficker or a woman. Right, women right. traffic too. Right, because he, and, and I and you know one of the things that me and you brought up, and, and I want to bring this up for our listeners, and this is. This is something that never made the news, and I want to I want to tell this story, okay? And me and you have discussed this a couple times on our show. When we were in Kosovo, we were part of a security detail that went after what was called the Kosovo Human Organ Trafficking Program. Now, right. it never it, this ne- if you want to look it up. All you got to do is Google Kosovo organ trafficking. And one of the things that happened in, um, that it happened over there, and, and all you got to do is literally Google it. What would happen was that you had organ theft in Kosovo. And right. one of the organ uh, traffickers was arrested actually in, um, in Cyprus a few years ago. Right. So one of the things that was happening in the border, and this is this happened in Brownsville, in Reynosa, in Nogales, and some of the other places, has been that they have found bodies that organs have been surgically removed from the host, whatever you want to call it, whether it's a stripped child. Stripped out of them. Stripped, stripped out, out of them. them. Just like, look, you have to think and, of it. And... and, uh, and and here's one of the things that that was brought up. Those those individuals that had that that were being taken, um, they weren't being taken. How, how do you call it? Um, what was scary about some of the mass graves that they found across the border, and especially the ones that were that had organ trafficking um, signatures. Was there was no defensive wounds, right? That that's a scary. If you don't it means want, they were drugged. Yeah, it, it means they were drugged, or that you had whoever was doing it in close proximity was was comfortable enough with the the victim to not have to use whatever you want to call it. Um, they didn't have to knock them out. They used either drugs, coercion, or whatever you want to call it, or, or influence. And so this is one of the concerns that they've had. And not only of not only has this been shown at the border, but it, it's been shown once they've gotten into the USA. And so, the you know, no one, and I mean, and honestly, here, here's the thing that I go back to. If you honestly think that people that have, that have taken... A, a sworn oath to the United States Constitution to basically um, th- to actually just treat them like chattel. I I, I don't under- I think that you understand the 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 honor and the integrity George, of the agents actually George, enforcing the, the law. George, wrong. I would have agreed with something uh, that you said wholeheartedly up until about a year ago and with what's come out with how the FBI violated their oaths uh, how sworn officers of the courts have violated their oaths specifically with FISA how shallow evidence was allowed in that should never have been allowed in investigators who had their own little thing going were allowed to investigate with bias you know what's the first thing you learn as an investigator first thing you learn is if you have a bias you tell somebody and you can be relieved there was a time when I yes even when I was a federal cop I was asked to be uh, there was a neighbor of mine who was dealing crack and everybody knew it and of course I couldn't even do anything because the local police had an investigation going there, like just write down license plates. Well, I get selected for the grand jury. So when it came time for his indictment, I was on the grand jury. And when they bring him up, I was like to the judge, I was like, look, I'm his neighbor. I can't be unbiased. 
I saw him deal drugs, prostitute his girl, and this is me and the judge. Nobody else. I'm not shading the entire thing, and I'm not shading that grand jury. And the judge goes, yes, you can. I'm going to recuse you from this. And right. that's what a responsible person does. And that's what you do when you do hold that Constitution sacred. But we're not seeing a lot of that shit now, are we, George? No. No, I, I mean, and, and you think about it this. The, the, the kids that are coming across, right? We don't, you know, for, for like, for example, let, let, let's use, can we use Guatemala as a, as a... It's one of the countries they come from, you're sure. I, let's use Guatemala because both of us have been, um, both of us have been deployed there. Let, let's just use this. Guatemala doesn't have, a, we don't have a good DIA there, which is the Defense Intelligence Agency. Right. We, we don't have that. Now, if you want to go and argue this, fine. You know, but Guatemala, at one point a few years ago, had death squads that were literally going around the country and killing homeless people. For, they, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I, this is not, we're, this isn't conjecture, people. We, we, you know, me and Shuffy have been deployed to some really shitty places across the world. And this is stuff that we are sitting there trying to tell you because our concern is this. If you hear some scuttlebutt, if you hear some things that aren't true, then you what you do is you pass it on to other people and you sit there and go, well, this is, got, you know, I, I heard it on the interwebs and th that it has to be true. So in Guatemala, we don't have a DIA there, the, which is the Defense Intelligence Agency, cause, and we don't have a SOFA agreement, which is Statute of Forces Agreement, because we don't have that many troops deployed there. We really don't have a big presence. And, and it, it doesn't have a it doesn't have a large presence of DIA. There is right. some in the embassy. Uh, there is no SOFA agreement, no status of forces right. agreement. And, and go ahead. And everybody who knows anything about how embassies work, the military liaison is always a DIA guy. And usually they are more plugged in than the CIA. If you don't believe this. Robert, I can't think of his name. Robert David Still will even say it that the DIA had more contacts than he did in most places he was at. So that's saying something when George is telling you, and I'm backing him up on it. DIA did not have a major presence. Now it doesn't mean NSA didn't from right. electronic surveillance, and it doesn't mean CIA didn't have boots on the ground somewhere. But like I said, human intelligence is mostly handled nowadays by DIA. So you you go in there and there's no DIA and so some of the people from Guatemala they had these death squads and, and this is don't believe me and Shove look Google it and, and and you will tell you they had these death squads from the government that were going through parts of Guatemala City and other parts of Guatemala not just Guatemala City and they were literally right. killing homeless people on the ground and or who they perceived as being homeless i.e. they didn't get back if there was a curfew established quick enough right yeah and if you just you know and so the now part of this was from the you know part of this was from the the civil war that they had endured and which cited some you know some bad actors and get some more bad actors but in the last few years, what, what has happened in Guatemala City is you've had the drug cartels have taken over. And so here's one of the things that they do. Yep. Most of our, the drugs coming into this country come in containers. There's no doubt about it. I, I, I would say whatever percentage, more of the percentage comes in shipping containers than the mules. But here, here's one of the things that they'd use. They use the mules coming across the border as decoys to basically keep the agents, the, the Customs and Border Protection, busy. So, or you know, they'll even call in a mule coming in with a load, and they, or they'll do this. They'll right. say somebody will line drop on a guy, and when he, is, he comes through, they have four or five other vehicles there 
And that's why you'll see a lot of times they'll just shut down the border because right. some things happen like that because they would try to get through before that car did. Right. And, and so, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to No, interrupt. I'm just saying they have a lot of fuckery afoot when they're doing this. And I would say, and if you disbelieve me, just look up the real story of Barry Sill and Eugene Hassenfuss, Iran-Contra, Guns for Drugs, all this crap. Look, this... Right, I mean... I would it, say most of the drugs to get through, and I'm, I'm not going to lie, are probably done by our own government. That's my opinion. Well, it's let's just, just say that, let's just say that they, they are, but I'm saying is that in order to smuggle anything, whether it's drugs, guns, money, any of it, there's a pattern that, that emerges from it. You can't just dr smuggle drugs without having a, a pattern. You've got to have a drop-off point. You've got to have signal intelligence. You've got to have mimicking. You have to sit there and say, okay, are they are the people that are chasing you running parallels? Right. What kind? What what you know? What what's your signal? Where's your drop? Where's your pickup point? Um, what's your mule? What 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 is the you know? Those are things that if you take a look at at, at this argument that you that let's let's take a step backwards. If you, if I'm carrying thirty kilos of heroin, thirty kilos is sixty six pounds. I'm not just putting it in an overcoat or a right. backpack or a satchel and carrying it across. It, it, 66 pounds is a lot of weight. So you you have to you have to put it in packages. You have to put it in 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 a, in a sort of a material where it, in case you're stopped that it doesn't show up to the dogs. Um, it, and, and there's a process to it. And what we're saying, me, me and Shuff have gone in, and I've gone to the detachment, I was in detachment six, the drug interdiction task force. We learned how they're, they're, they're bringing stuff across the border. So it's crazy. I mean, look, I'm, and, I don't want to get into specific sets and details just because that, you know, right. But, uh, but I'm saying is that flow. there's, there, there's a process to it. They're not just throwing it in a backpack and going across. They're not just, you know, going, they oh. Have, they were under the last administration. It was that brazen, George. And right, right, right. Other. I'm not saying that there wasn't, but like, like what I'm saying is that, that they, you know, it, because here's the thing, 66, you know, the average, and the reason I, I chose 30 kilos is the average male person can carry 25 to 30 kilos Without, right. uh, you know, right. basically. And 30 kilos, let, let me just tell you this. One kilo of one kilo of heroin coming across the border is going to re return you roughly about $78,000 per kilo on the street. So you're not going to give 30 kilos to a guy with a two, you know, a $2 million street value without knowing some, I, I don't know what you want to call it, some procedure that you can follow them. and It's not just follow them. I mean, if they get arrested, that's the price of doing business. You and I both know this. Right. But, but what they're worried about is uh, if they uh, turn on them, flip on them, start giving intel, whatever, then all of a sudden that's why they know the families. That's why, look, I've been to mass graves in Iraq I've seen them, just like George has, at different places. And um, it's not a pretty thing, guys and girls. But what it is, is it's a reality check, a gut right. check. And, uh, you know, like I said, man, it's to, to most people, Georgia, George, it's a uh, fantasy what we've seen. And that's right. okay you know they they don't have to all know what we know and what we've seen because the damage that happens from it but there's a reality that they do need to know and the reality is that human trafficking dope uh, financing it's all tied together and that's a reality and right and, and it goes out and, and let me let me tell you this in in Toledo Ohio Toledo, 
which, which has the, up, up until the last uh, up until the last few years has only been known for oh let's say um, in, in the last few years has only been known for the Toledo Mud Hens had the second largest human trafficking um, group busted in Toledo, Ohio for trafficking humans. And they didn't do this on, you know, they didn't do this on a, on a whim. They had, they, you know, they had actual people that were sitting there um, trafficking people and they had systems in place. And I think that 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 is something that is. But that shouldn't shock you. Look at what's going on in Europe. The grooming gangs. Right. I mean, George, they are the canary in the coal mine. No matter what people want to say, right now Europe is the canary in the coal mine. And you're seeing what's happening. And are they actually taking action against these people? Not really. But guess who they are taking action against? The people who are whistleblowing on it. That's why I said you have to look at all the aspects of it. Human trafficking, the drugs, and the finance. And that's the problem. Nobody wants to go after these financiers because a lot of that money goes right back. Well, I'm not going to get into specifics, but you know what I'm saying. It, right. It's, the government knows about it. That's all I'm saying. Right. And, it, and you, know, here's one of the, you know, here's one of the issues behind it, too, is that at the at the end of the day, all of us, there's not anybody out there that wants to have, there's not any of us that want, you know, that wants to have, um, you know, that wants to treat kids, you know, and basically um, have them as, you know, treat them as, I, I don't know you want to call them, as chattel property. No, no one wants that. You know, I mean, I mean, there's, I mean, do you know anybody that wants that? Actually, yeah. Uh, I mean, there are, there are some people. There, there are you know some people. Saying. Yeah, there are some people that want that. But for the whole, most people don't want. You know, most, most normal people don't. But that's the whole problem. That's why we're seeing what we're seeing right now. Honestly, uh, right. You know the the. Everybody wants to live in their happy little bubble, their own little echo chamber. And the problem is, when you try to bust their echo chamber, they don't want to hear it. Right. And that's a sad thing for Americans who are supposed to be live free or die, free thinkers. Uh, we love Amer- America. God bless. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. You, you, you have a, even a political class that think nothing about people and we're seeing it within our own agencies so i mean it's systemic george and honestly i said this on my own podcast and you know this you've heard it before right you and i and several other people that we both know i used to always say this and we were three ring we were circus or uh three ring we were circus masters in the three ring circus, right? So we each had our own little ring, right? And we've been around these politicos internationally. The funny thing is to me is all Trump did, he's the major circus owner like P.T. Barnum. And he's pulling back. He said, forget it. We're having free day today. He's lifted the tent up and he's letting the American people see, look what's going on behind the scenes, folks. Right. This is real. And we're seeing it on full display. And you have over a majority of the media saying he's full of shit. And when you have somebody in, I don't smoke dope, but I also don't really give a shit. I mean, if somebody smokes dope and dies, that's just more air for me to breathe. But the thing that I'm saying is you have somebody like Dennis Rodman who breaks down, and I think it was honest. Because he gave this to Obama and said, you can be this guy. And all of a sudden it takes Trump, the dolt, the idiot. No, Trump's smart enough to know he'll have a legacy nobody else will have. 
I guarantee you you'll see this on this. So those two things, out of anything we got out of this election, those were the most two important things we got. We got to see the deep state is nothing more than the SES, Special Executive Service, and that's in every federal agency. And the second thing we got out of it, in my opinion, is we're seeing how the media truly is trying to shape opinion through propaganda. Right, and, and here's the other thing. One of the things, that, and just to go on, Agent 5 in the Inspector General report said, I would rather have brunch with Trump and a bunch of his supporters like the ones from Ohio that are retarded. Now, I understand, look. Right. Now, I understand, however you want to however you want to bring this up, and you want to say, look, the you know, you, you've got retarded people in Ohio, and we do have, let, let's be honest, go to Georgesville, Walmart, we, we got retards. But the, the point is that you don't say this in conversation when you're enforcing the law. You know, this is a conversation that me and you have, not when you're enforcing the law. And I think that it goes back to, I, I think once that you start putting people's incentive in front of their... I, I don't know what you want to call it. Um, there, when you when you put their incentive out, and you're putting them out as the fact is that you're you're letting them know what you're thinking, that leads um, that leads to some really really bad mechanisms in place. I, I don't know, you know, whatever, however you want to say that in in. Um, you know, in as a term. What term? Rephrase me. Okay, you have a you have a FBI agent, right? And in the IG in the okay. IG report that came out, what he said was the the you know. So I, I want to make it clear again is that in the IG term. They in one of the transcripts that they they released, he said this is his exact terms, was that I would rather have brunch. I, I would rather have brunch with Trump and a bunch of his supporters like the ones from Ohio that are retarded. Now, that is part that of actually the, wasn't an agent. That was a lawyer. Lawyer number agent two number or five. Four. I, I mean. I, it says yeah. agent number five, but okay, it, well, when it, I was reading the report, I think it was lawyer number two or four. I can't remember. But here, here's the the thing that I, I point out about that that term. I don't care that you said something like that, but there's a difference that me and you. I wouldn't say that under if I'm working. I wouldn't say that somewhere where I could be used a, against me. Under the, you know, where that transcript could be held against me. Well, that, that's the whole problem that, that we found out. So much of it has been deemed, look, national defense is national defense. Everybody on Veterans Radio Syndicate knows, uh, even Christian Saucier, he was put away for doing one one hundredth of what the Clinton server did. And it's come out to bear fruit. Right. He gets, what, a year in, in prison? And, and that's what I meant about whistleblowers, too. The last administration went so hard against whistleblowers and violators because it was sending a message to anybody that did not toe the party line. Right. This is going to be your fate. And... and you have a guy who took pictures. Yeah, okay, there may have been classified stuff, but it's on his own cell phone. Yeah, he loses it on a drunk night. Whatever happened, however that cell phone got turned in, and it's him. But it's his living space. And how many people, if a veteran's honest, have taken a picture somewhere that you're like, ah, it's kind of gamey, even on a combat outpost. There might be something behind you, and you don't know the tech to make that thing fuzz or something. Shit like this happens, and and are you are you supposed to just live in fear that you took that picture? No, 
you figure time will pass, it'll be declassed, and, you know, I can show my kids in 50 years. Right. You know, it, it's ridiculous. And, and then all of a sudden you have somebody who actually has, and it was proven by this report, this is the biggest thing that the media overlooked, that Obama knew because he was communicating with her on her illegal server under a fucking nom de plume. Right. So, I mean, you know, we, we've sort of gone over the map, but it all combines into, and I've said this, it's a sad thing, and you know on my podcast, I've been pretty topical, and I was even, I even called the Korean thing before it ever happened, and anybody knew it was going to happen. And the thing that I'll tell you right now, I'm being very frank with you guys. I'm going to tell you veterans, because I respect you, because I'm a veteran too. Georgios knows this. I know Georgios. Oh, man, this really irritates me. When I see the actually our own veterans getting divided, look, I, I me and George, George were raised in a place where it didn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican. We could still have, we could disagree on politics, but agree to disagree. Right. We still have a great time together. Well, now politics is everything. And that's a problem because we're no longer able to point to the bad. It's, trust me, I didn't like when Trump bombed Syria. But guess what? I'll say it. Right. I mean, let's be, and let's be honest about this in, in, in this debate about the, you know, it, it seems to be that, the, that me and you disagree on, on certain subjects. Even there's no consensus with the exception of a couple things. Um, me and you don't always agree on certain, I, I, whatever you want to call it, um, on certain topics. So, for example, me and you don't agree on on our influence in, in, in global politics. We don't agree on that. That's fine. But what we, we where right. we where we don't fight at is we don't sit there and tell people that if you disagree with me, that all of a sudden you're the enemy. Because I'll give you an example. This is where I, I have a hard time with. Let, let's just use the Robert De Niro, the, the Robert De Niro, uh, you know, where he goes in front of the, the Tony. Robert De Niro, fuck Trump comment. Right. Yeah. What, what did that accomplish? It accomplished fuck all, but it gave him street cred with the Hollywood elite. Look, I, I <laughs> right, oh but I'm God, but dude. I'm saying is if you're sitting, but here here's you know without going off of the you know without going off of the I, I don't know what you want to call it while going off the rails. Um, what did it accomplish? It didn't accomplish anything. It didn't add to the debate. It didn't add it to the crit the critique of it. It didn't add to saying, "Hey, listen, you know, Trump. You didn't. You disagree with Trump, but where? And, and here, here's the argument that we're, you know, exactly. That's the thing. A critique. If you're going to give a critique, 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 like fuck Trump. Look, I just said I disagreed with him throwing missiles at Syria, and I can tell you why because I know that." where that stuff came from and I'll throw it over to George some of the propaganda posters that I got from bros of mine on the ground in Syria and what I see is our media whipped it up well, oh they're using this gas they're using this gas well guess what it wasn't being done by the state of Syria it was being done by the rebels and we bought into it and, that, and who led that same charge John McCain Right. The old war hawk himself, who was singing like a bird while he was a prisoner of war. Every time, and I voted for his ass for president, so don't come at me like this. When I found out what he actually did, I was disgusted. And he was released because of who his daddy was. Remember, folks, daddy was an admiral. There was a lot, a lot of other people that languished. And if Trump... And this is something he added it. This is something about the Korean summit that I knew would happen, and me and George just talked about it once. Our fallen veterans from the Korean War, guess what? They're coming home. 
Right. And he added that last minute, and Kim Jong-un was like, yeah, mm, yeah, okay, you can have him. Right, and, and not one president, and I'm going to say this, we served under three presidents, Reagan, Clinton, and Bush. Not one of them ever... And Bush Jr. for me, and also partially Obama, so... Right, but, but I'm saying I'm using me as an example, because I don't like you, um, but... I know, we'll touch sticks later. Yeah, but all of us served under p- multiple presidents. Not one of them, not one of them addressed that with North Korea to saying, hey, listen, you know, we do have the remains, um, even in, in, in a place like, you know, where you look at uh, it, it, some of the battles they, they, they've had in North Korea, they never, the, the remains of fighter pilots of you know warriors that you know once the the battles were over um they never got home and 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 trump said hey listen you know this has been a sticking point in negotiations with your country for the last uh, i don't know 50 years whatever and and kim jong kim jong un said okay fine you can have him it was that easy but but no president even asked him. Look, when here's why I I believe Rodman. You guys can all laugh at me and whatever, and that's fine. You're veterans. I respect that. I want you to laugh at me because I'm a veteran, and this is nothing more than we're sitting at the bar telling tall tales, lusty tales of adventure. You can believe what the fuck ever you want, and guess what? I'm good with that because I know ain't no non-veterans listening to this podcast for fucking real. What I am telling you is, when I saw that man break down, because there's been times, Georgios has seen it, and when I, when I'm telling a story about something that happened, some real emotion comes out. And uh, fortunately, we're not talking about any of those issues tonight. But uh, I was like, this guy is telling the truth, and that gave me even a I didn't think that could ever be the case trust me I didn't like Rodman you know wearing a wedding dress and all that bullshit but the thing about it was he's like I brought this up to Obama and he starts breaking down and he goes he did nothing and now I'm happy because I'm seeing that Trump's doing something and I had to come here and he's wearing a Make America Great Again hat. I don't think I ever saw Rodman wear that. I think he was still probably a Hillary person. So I think I think there's a movement where people are seeing we have to be real with each other. And uh, that's I'm sorry if you if you disagree with me, that's fine. We can agree to disagree. But if if the positive movement that I'm seeing and I'm just saying it's an expression through Trump where people are thinking for themselves and realizing the truth of things. And, and trust me, I'm not exonerating Bush Jr. either or Bush Sr. Um, anyways, I'm, I'm just saying that we have not seen this since Reagan where somebody goes to Reykjavik, walks away from a meeting... And then comes out with a better deal and a better thing later. And then you see what Trump did when he was like, oh, well, we're not going to have this meeting where it's called off. And then Kim Jong-un makes his apologies and then they have the meeting. You know, the proof is in the pudding. Put up or shut up. It's right. the same in a foxhole, brother, in a combat zone. The guy who runs away or something, you got no respect for him. He's a bag of shit. But the guy that stood there, yeah, I, I have some respect, and that's all I'll say. Right, and, and here's you know here's part of the other you know here's part of the other issue too, is that one of the things that's happening is when you you know let, let, let's be honest about this and about the asi- um, the asylum picture, um, if you are seeking asylum. In the United States, okay. Um, if you're seeking asylum right. in, in the United States, you have to be vetted. 
there's no, you know, there's no, yeah. there's no non vetting of asylum because one of the, you know, one of the issues that happens, and this is something that, you know, I, however you want to call it, and, and and let's be let's be honest about this, you have to be vetted because one of the the issues has been is are you um, are you being used as a political ploy as opposed to actually needing help right well it's not even that look at this like i said europe's a canary in a coal, coal mine folks believe this or not don't care if you don't i'm telling you the truth all these syrian refugees we know i was a military policeman so was george epw and in prison is war and refugee control is one of our missions right Here's the thing. Refugees are kept in a safe area. It may be an adjacent country. This is the first time you're seeing mad refugees from Syria crossing into Italy, which is now clamping down. All these nations are clamping down. I believe Greece will soon. Uh, uh, it's going on there, all, too. Yeah, they're all going to clamp down because that's their gateway. But you have the slave markets, open slave markets of blacks. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. no, 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 no! Stop that right oh, yeah. there! It's oh, not. Yeah. It, it's not just the blacks. Hold, hold no, on there. It's mostly yes. It's it, mostly it, the Africans. It's yeah. Africans. Let let let's be let is let let's be right about that because it's not. I am being right about it. It's uh, mostly uh, blacks. No, there there are more. It, it's not just blacks. There are sub-Saharan Africans that are being put in the slave markets. Yes, there are blacks. But they're also but mulatto. Black, but I'm, but there's also being mulattoes. There's also the ones that's still considered black in Africa. You, George, let's not quibble. Okay, let's, please let's but, not quibble. They, but there's a lot of people from Africa that are being put in in Africa in Libya in the open, right? And they're not hiding the open slave trade. Yeah, and they're not hiding it. They're they're literally not hiding it. Let, let, it's let, an open market, and there's being sold. This is if you want something that is scary, and if you want something that is absolutely scary, they're being sold for less money than the slave trades of the the southern slave trade of the 1860s. Yeah, yeah 1860s. You're exactly correct. And, and that's the whole thing. And guess who the major dealers are in them? They're Arabs. Right. And, and here's the thing. So anyway, so th they're Syrian refugees crossing into Europe, and yet they're sub-Saharan Africans coming in. Right. They're not from Syria. They weren't involved in the war, but they're all trying to get refugee status. Echoes what we're seeing coming from our border. And when you brought that up about... Uh, what was Guatemala, I believe. Right. When when they're coming up, we're saying, Oh yeah, they're they're fleeing a war. <clears throat> well the logical thing is the next country over, we contain them there and when political pressures lessen, they go back. They go back to reestablish their countries. But instead they come here for our gibbs, our free gibbs, and the West has to pay for them. And I, I did an interview with a brother of mine from Germany uh, who was former BND and also worked with the Luftwaffe during the time I knew him. And uh, that's during the Cold War, brother. And uh, he worked MI for him. And the guy's right. an awesome dude. And the thing about him uh, that's ground shaking is he actually left. He's now in South America. And he's doing his own thing. And guess what? There's still a German contingent there. The funniest part to me is that now, from the CIA release and everything, even Bill O'Reilly admits, and me and you have had this conversation, we went round and round, that there was a separate Germany. There right. was the Germany that was surrendered by Donuts, but you will never see not one National Socialist that signed that surrender agreement. And that's why Germany is still a puppet of the U.S. And by their constitution. Constitution. So, 
all this muff fake where people talk shit, they need to understand the entire geopolitics of it. So when you're seeing this stuff, and let's say you're an open classical liberal, just like me and George are, we we differ slightly. Um, but the problem is, I'm just to the right of Genghis Khan, because once I understand the truth. The only way to fix it and bring it back to our norm. I, I'm just way. to the right. I mean, honestly, I'm to the right of uh, Alexander the Great, but that's all right. Okay, well, you're Greek, so that's okay. I get that. Right. We're good. Don't worry about it, brother. Uh, but like I said, man, it, it, it's just the muff fake has become too, too stifling when you're trying to shut down people's speech instead of actually increasing speech. You know, why why would you shake a bunch of coins in a can to a liberal homosexual Jewish guy by the name of David Rubin who goes out on the dark web tour with another liberal college professor, uh, Peterson. I can't think of his first name. Jordan Peterson. Peterson. And, and you have these people that all their, all their point is is to shut it down. Shut it down. Well, if you have a better argument, then you speak about it. You right. speak about it. More speech, not less. Well, and, and let's bring up something that me and you have talked about, you know, because I'm a big fan of Jordan Peterson. And one of the things that he's brought up, and, and me and you have disagreed about this ad nauseum, but you know, you've known me, and I've written position papers over the, uh, over the years, and one of the things that he's brought up is um, that 80% of the papers in the humanities aren't used as reference, uh, they're, they're not being used as reference or, or cited for reference in any academia. So that means only 20% of any of the, the works that people are doing in the humanities actually hold any merit. That is a scary, that, that, that's very scary. Well, that's because the humanities, man. You're talking about the Greeks, man. Come on. The Greeks, the Romans. They're all cisgendered white males. No, oh, the, like, great, the Greeks like weren't. The, the Greeks yeah, yeah, weren't. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can sell that to somebody else. What I'm saying is that's their belief. And they believe that any philosophy, any meaning, was nothing but oppressiveness by the people that were coming in. And trust me, a friend of mine... A very good friend and an author, and she she's a good person. I'm not gonna, I, you know, I don't ever. Right. I never punch right, but if I know a lefty, and I like them, I'll never punch left on them, and I I maintain that, and you know this, uh, publicly. I'll never do that. But this person was like, it's all neo colonialism. Da 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 da. Yeah. Okay. Sell that somewhere else, because honestly, you show me a country outside the West that has done anything major without Western support. And then when the West leaves, look at Liberia. That was a part we actually funded to bring our people back that wanted to go back to Africa. And look right. at the state that's in. And once we left, the buildings are falling apart, the bridges are falling apart, and now you have the Chinese going in, and they're building infrastructure because China don't have to put up with the shit we did as colonials. They'll just kill motherfuckers. Right. And 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 so all these people that are do-gooders and think they know everything, these social justice warriors, they're actually enabling a state that doesn't give a fuck about human rights, and they'll just line people up against the wall and do the same thing of the dreaded Nazis. You know? So, whatever, man. I mean, th their argument always falls apart with me. Well, and, and here's the thing: if you're, you know, you're honest about that, um, let, let's be honest about a couple things. If, if you're bringing up the social justice warriors and, you, and you're and and I've railed against them, what are you adding to the conversation? You know, I, I mean, let's let's be honest about that. What exactly are you offended about? Because being offended by itself is not a currency. That that that's the you know that is the no it's not you're right and, and let me and let me give you a prime example. 
if you are if you're being offended okay by itself that isn't a that that in, in itself isn't currency let, but let's say this th this is a prime example if you're a disabled person and you and you go to a courthouse and there's no ramps for a wheelchair that is an honest you know that that is an honest debate to say hey listen you know what we should get to the city council or the county commissioners right but here's what you don't do you don't burn down the courthouse just because they haven't accommodated you and that is what that that is what is happening on the left they want to basically burn down whatever system doesn't accommodate to them and that is that that's the the problem behind it it's not the it's it's the same thing with statues i mean i'm waiting for the day the american legion here had a secret you know where i live had a secret donor build a monument to all fallen all fallen regardless of their color race nationality except they were americans from every war from i think it was uh the civil war on because right where we're from you know we weren't there for the revolution but it's a gi with a still pot on with a rifle in the ground bronze of course and how long is it going to be till somebody puts a rope around that statue's neck trust me i believe this will happen uh and rips that statue down because it's a white cisgendered male from World War II. Um, and there's an M1 Garand in front of him, you know, a tool of oppression, a tool of colonialism. Um, I'm waiting for that day because, look, everybody thought, oh, they're just pulling down statues of Lee and this, that, and the other. No, they're going after Jefferson and Washington, too. Right. So what... what are we supposed to look the first thing a cultural Marxist does is destroy history because now they have pliable young minds that will do that long march. People forget the kind of cultural Marxists we have and even the college professors don't realize what they've done. These are not Marxist. They are Maoist. Right. And it, well, and, and here's that. Here's why this is relevant to, to this is that if you're upset about if you're upset about a process right and and I mean you kind of disagree on this but this is my opinion Karl Marx never wanted his philosophy to be a government that he never wanted that to be a government he wanted to be he was a social scientist and what he basically said is look this is a problem you know this is an inherent problem in our society this needs to be addressed but there's no none in any of his writings that he write, wrote about he did not come out and say that his um um he, he didn't come out and say we need to to instill this as a form of government what he said is we need to instill that you know we need to address some of the ills in society. I get where you're coming from with that, but he actually did. And he even said during his writings, people forget his writings too much. Everybody cherry picks. Uh, it is, he said it cannot work in agrarian society, which was Russia. Majorly, right. it was an agrarian society. And same with the beginnings of it. That's why you had the Great Great Leap and the uh, uh, Long March happen, uh, where people were basically taking anything made of metal, including like you know bridges that had you know uh, still in them, and melting them down because the people were saying there's metal in them bridges, and we got to make those for guns or equipment for the state. And people starved, and, and the academics got killed. This is what happened. But Marx did say, 
that it has to happen in a capitalist society, and he targeted Western Europe and the U.S. in those writings. If you read them correctly, it was supposed to be. It could never work in Russia, and it was proven it could not work. So even when they became... Look, the Russians even had their own space shuttle that they were trying to build from direct plans of ours. Uh, I'm not blowing hate on the Soviet Union, but that was the truth. And so when you say Marx was just a political movement, it, it kind of falls ill. Then you'd have to say, well, Leninism and Lenin was just a political movement, and so was Stalin. And people forget that after the war... In the Second World War, the concentration camps that were run still by the Soviet Union and their client states stayed open for an additional four years, and there's never been a society more anti-Semitic than the Soviet system. That's a fact. Even though the NKVD guy, Berea, uh, was a Jew. So, I mean, we, we can go line and verse down through this, but you'll find that some people are better than others. Some girls' mothers are better than other girls. A little Morrissey for you folks. Right. Well, I, I mean, and I guess part of, the, part of the issue that I've got with them is this. Is that when you sit there and talk about the the process is that people want you to be separated from facts, whether it's Leninism, car, communism, and all that prop, you know, state sponsored propaganda has always been a cornerstone of that political movement. And that is one of the things why I think part of it, where we're at, why some of us are um, at each other's throats is because we don't, we're not telling the truth to each other and as a result you know whatever you want to call state sponsored media is able to get away with crafting the message no you're exactly right and and they have crafted a message look anderson cooper was a cia intern uh grandson of gloria vanderbilt he comes from the vanderbilt line nobody can doubt this it's fact it's historical and remember my hero uh, ran afoul of Commodore Vanderbilt, William Walker, and William Walker was a president of El Salvador, Nicaragua, or San Salvador, Nicaragua. So, you know, that's uh, that was something that put me on my cast at 14. I knew what I wanted to do. I just haven't been able to find a small enough country that I could be president of. Said right. with tongue in cheek. You know that, brother. Right. I, I, I think I would want to go back and take over Greece. What, George? Go over there and make friends with Frank from uh, Golden Dawn. I'm sure that could be arranged. Hey, you know what? I, I, there, I, I tell people I have three stages of being uh, of drinking. One of them is I'm a happy drunk. Second of all, I am a in-between drunk. And the third one is I'm drunk enough to take over Constantinople. So that That's is... a good thing. You uh, know, uh, that is... Um, um, but, you know, here, here, here's part of the issue that it is that people bring up. And, and I think that, you know... We've got about 10 minutes left on, on, the, on the show, and what I want to cover in the last 10 minutes is basically this. Before you start getting upset at, at whatever you want to be upset about, um, that you know what the truth is, it's okay if you want to be upset at, at, at something. It, it, it is... Um, it, it, it's all right. I, I don't care what you want to be upset about, whatever it is, whether it is, you know, kids at the border, welfare, you know, people that that that, you know, put uh, Coke in um, single malt scotch, anything. I don't care what you pin in. 
but whatever you whatever your argument is make sure that you know the truth behind it and the energy behind it because if people are just asking you to be angry about something what's the energy behind it and number two is that I think part of the you know part of the argument has to be is are is the people telling you are they is the is the message that people are telling you is does it can is it you know it does it have integrity well I would agree with that completely brother uh, what I'll say on that is uh Integrity is something that we all know as veterans. We all understand this. And we understand why it happens and, and where it comes from. What I don't get is that people are so quick now to throw away their integrity for an ideology, for something they perceive because they're being led by the propaganda and this stuff has been written about under the clergy plan i mean this stuff we can go line and verse under a lot of different things even uh brzezinski uh can't think of the guy the other guy on the right who came up with the same thing but they the left right paradigm is a fraud right and so the only true way for a person to view things, and I say this all the time on my page, and you know this, on Sword Point 9, all small letters, Sword Point and the numeral 9, I say it all the time. Look at both issues and come to your own decision. Because if you don't come to your own decision and you don't see the antidote, there is antidotes to everything from the left and the right. And the truth is always the antidote. The sunlight's the best disinfectant. And that's something that I think we miss in every conversation. Yeah, I, I, I think it's I, I think it's I, I think it's sometimes that, you know, we gotta be honest about that is that sometimes that we do miss you know, the the overall view. And and part of it is that, you know, like it's it, it's the argument that we've had about the hills we die on. I I, th I think you know we fight on sometimes it, I think that was a, a that was a great show and until it got corrupted but right the but hills here we die on that show when it started out with me and George that show was legendary and I'll tell you why because you're seeing people that we're not polar opposites we actually there's a love between of us for a long time. And uh, a respect, I guess, uh, love, I guess, doesn't cover it completely, George. It's a respect. Right. And, 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 and that's the thing that he has pissed me off. I'm sure I've pissed him off. And we've done, you know, our little shots to each other. But the thing that is the best is that we're still brothers. And right. uh, brothers fight. Brothers get down in the mud. All you veterans, you know you, you've got that guy you love to death, and you have put bare knuckles to his face, and he's done it to you. And it and sisters too, veterans. I don't think I'm giving you short shrift. I am sure this has happened to all of us. And the precious thing, if you don't listen to anything from me, at least take this from me. Um, I'll be fifty. George is a few years older than I am. And uh, live your life, enjoy your life, don't fear anything, uh, be counter to anything when you see it coming and it's a trend, that's when you need to worry. And uh, love your brother and sister veteran and help them. That's the key. And, and all this muff fake where it's my sex, it's who I choose to sleep with, all this weird shit. I'd never have judged a dude by or a woman by who they choose to sleep with. That's irrelevant to me. 
It's whether right. they're a veteran because we have that commonality and and that love. And honestly, if if we give up, if we as veterans give up on this shit, then it's our fault and we should all be hung. And I mean that. Right, because I mean, one of the things that, that you have to understand is that what unites us is more, much more... What unites us is much more than what uh, divides us, and I, I think that's right. one. Of, and I think that's one of the things that's lost, and especially when we get in these conversations of where people are giving you narratives to elicit a response, because everybody, you know what, I, I, everybody can understand that. Hey, look, the you know the kids out there. Oh my God, it's the children. Well, of course, no one is going to be insensitive to a child. All of it, you know, most of us have children. Um, and I think that's one of the things. I do, and he's a Marine. Right. So I guess I didn't do something wrong. I mean, he he became a Eagle Scout when it still meant something. Right. And I was an Eagle Scout, and he became a Marine. And, George, here's something I do want you to mention before this podcast. Name the most common thing that, and and the three I think are the three most common things that that every president has had in common. Not every, but most presidents have had, have in common. And um, you gave this to me one time. Well, one of them is that they're they're Eagle Scouts. I mean that that yep. is the the mo- most common. Um, I, I the other two were Army. Number two, and Navy was number three. They were veterans, right? Right. And, and that look, veterans. If you can't unite behind Americana, behind what we are in all of our difference, look, I'm half Dago. Don't know my dad. I'm a bastard. I know his name, but that's about it. Never met the, the guy, and I'm. Half Italian, or because of him, you know, I'm half Italian, Dago, and I'm half German, and I treasure both sides of myself. And because I treasure myself, does that mean I say, George, you're Greek, you're Untermensch, you're you're nobody? No. And and that's something we've lost. And that's all I'll say. That'll be my final thought on that, brother. Well, the other thing that's most common too is that. Um, the the most common thing is that they're also lawyers, which is kind of scary. But yeah, uh, that's that's very scary. Um, well, the other thing I was going to tell you know the most common thing that uh, that you have. Um, one of the things that I was you know point on is that it the most common thread for Navy SEALs, uh, U.S. Uh, you know Marine Force Recon. Rangers and all that as they were former wrestlers. That that's one thing to keep in mind. Nice. Yeah. So I, I mean I think you know, and a lot of that we can take away from is this. If somebody is, you know, the final thing that you know, let, let's just call it a night on this. The final thing that I, I say to people is if somebody is telling you something like this kids on the border, um, these things that, you know, people are sitting there telling you, let let's make sure. Let's make sure that the argument behind the, you know, the energy behind the argument is 100% correct. Let, let's just make sure that. Make sure that when somebody is telling you that they're just ripping kids apart from the, you know, from kids, you know, the kids are being ripped apart from their parents, that that's actually factual and not just some narrative somebody is, is making up to get you upset. I agree with you totally, man. I mean, George. And let's and and then let let's, you know, we've got a couple minutes left. Final thoughts. Final thoughts is, brother and sister veterans. Uh, push all other politics, all concerns aside. We need to band together during this time, and help each other. Our veteran brothers and sisters. 22 a day needs to stop 
we need to give the love to our people. And when I say our people, you know veterans are of all color. So I don't want to hear no shit about racism. Right. They are Americans. That's what they have in common. And Georgios is of olive skin, and I'm of... Olive skin makes the best skin, baby. Yeah, sure. well, uh, but I, I'm of a little different olive skin. But what, but what I'll tell you is we can always joke around about who has the bigger dick. And and it's so funny, man. I mean, honestly, put and let, hey, shit aside. And, let, and let's, 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 let, let's close on this one. You can't, you can't spell champion without MP. That's right. You cannot spell <laughs> champion without a military and an MP in it. That's right. Military police. Hoorah. And you know I love you, man. And I can't wait to talk to you after this show. So, so with that being out, said, we're, we're going to close out. And, and I want to say this to, you know, to our people that are listening. Um, you know, look, people are going are, are gonna to say stuff to you. And it, it doesn't matter what it is. And it doesn't matter what what the, the narrative, what the, the show, what, what platform. Check it out. Because honestly, if somebody is telling you something, what is the energy behind it? If they want to, you know, I try to educate people on this show and I want to make sure that people at least, you know, have some some truth below, behind the, 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 the arguments. And if you get that, that's fine. If you want to be, you know, if you want to include cognitive dissonance and you don't want to listen to anything, then, you know, this isn't the kind of the show that you want to, um, then you want it to be listening to. Um, we don't try. We try not to feed red meat to anybody that's listening. It, it, it's just not what we do. And here is, you know, what I close with is this: what unites us is far less than what divides us. Listen, you know, sit down, talk to your, you know, your fellow, your fellow vet, your fellow friends, and listen to what they have to say because a lot of times that is important in, in the conversation. And I want to th say this. Thank you for listening to the Bear News. This is your host, George Pardos. Thank you for listening to Veteran Radio Syndicate. Um, I want to mention a couple of our spot. Uh, our Threadcon 5 clothing is one of our sponsors. It is some of the best uh, apparel out there. Um, if you get a chance, um, look it up on our page. Um, you mention this show, and you get a 10% off... Um, you get a 10% off um, sh um, savings, um, which, again, it, 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 it's their stuff is nice to be. But it's it, it, to anybody that's listening, it's threatcon5clothing.com. And you, you can use the promo code VRS18 to get 10% off your purchase. And he has some really great shirts on there. And they, you know, feel free to... To go there and you uh, and order some um, apparel. Anyway, thank you again for listening to the Bear News. Uh, thank you to our special guest, um, Shuff, and we will talk to you next time. <laughs>